Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Aurora RC Mini Fight. And I didn't realise this at first but I think it's called the Mini Fight because it's based around the 5 inch B Fight model that is available. In fact if you look at the shape of the frame it is almost identical there even down to the colour of the braids around the wires there. So I think it was their intention to make a mini version of that and that is exactly what it is now it's actually a 2.5 inch model so it's a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than a 2 inch model so this is the GTR 90 here to compare and you can see prop size is actually a fair amount bigger so it weighs without a battery 93 grams and it doesn't come with a battery so I'm probably going to be using this Isheen 550 milliamp 3S battery. The ESCs are only rated to 3S, but that should be fine with these components. So let me talk you through the components. So the motors are Sunny Sky, so, you know, a reputable brand of motor. They are 1106 and they are 5,500 kV. So if you compare that to the Emax 1106 motors, those ones are 6000 kV on the Baby Hawk R, however that's running a 2 inch prop and I think they have made the right decision to go slightly down in kV for these with these bigger props, so yeah they are the Gem Fan Flash props very popular propeller, a really nice propeller, usually you have to switch those out when you get a model like this but not in this case, so they are the 2540 tri-blade propellers and they will send you just random colors and these are just the white ones here so it's a 110 sized frame and it's a true x carbon fiber of course seems really nice quality very sturdy and we have got some of the screws recessed here which is really nice you are given a silicon battery mat which you do have to cut up yourself and I put that on there you're given a battery strap I'm not too fond of the color and you have to be very careful when feeding the battery strap through as well because they have soldered these wires up in a reverse way so it looks really neat actually look at that so you you can't actually see any of the soldering there it's all done underneath it seems like it's really well built and yeah I've got a good feeling about this one so then we have got the stack in here so at first I thought it was a HGL RC stack and I thought wow that's a bulletproof system but it's not they are 28 amp BL Halley S 4 in 1 ESCs, but they're only rated for a 3S. As I say, with these motors and these props, that is a good combination. Then the flight controller is the Aurora RC's own flight controller. It's an omnibus F3 as the targets there with beta flight on screen display. It's come flash with beta flight 3.22, so fairly recent version and everything is just plugging in with these little connectors here so this is the D8 receiver version that I've got the free sky there's also fly sky 2a and the DSM 2 DSMX options as well which is nice so yeah those just plug in there and we've also got a LED board and a buzzer at the back which is connected as well so you can configure the LEDs they aren't set up to do anything I've changed them to arm state and yet the buzzer is connected so you can do loss model alarm but none of that was set up either and then above that we have got the VTX which is called the AR VTX 2200 and it is a 48 channel VTX but it's not as convenient as the HGL RC one in that it is using lights for the channels and the bands in fact this is the instructions here and you can see yeah it's a switcher between 25 milliwatt 100 milliwatt 200 milliwatt we have got a button which is actually at the back it's a little bit tricky to get with your fingers so you probably need to use like a screwdriver to get to it 
but it's a 10 second press to change the power output so you've got a little red LED there that flashes three times for 200 milliwatts and one time for 25 milliwatt and two times for 100 milliwatt there which is quite nice and it's a sleeve dipole antenna here and that's using a micro UFL connector so yeah that's quite nice need to check that that's pressed down nicely though yeah seems to be okay you might want to use some electrical tape on there like liquid tape to stick that down I wouldn't recommend hot glue because these get hot so it'll come off anyways but yeah it doesn't seem to have that on there it's a minor thing very minor and then yeah you can see that we've got some different LEDs and you can just about see them there so we've got blue LEDs here for the band and then green LEDs just three of them for the frequency so you have to keep this with you really I mean I'm using a band scanner anyway so not a huge problem for me but if you want a specific channel so it looks like the fat sharks there is on band D so yeah I'm gonna probably go for that and then we've got a little diagram here as well does look like there's an RX option to change the channels through there but that's not connected I'm glad to see we've just got the video the ground and the voltage there so yeah above that we've got the receiver and you can access the bind button which is really nice and this receiver powers up from USB so you can just bind it from plugging in the USB connector which is quite nice and then yeah we have this nice flat top as well which I always liked about the B5 you potentially could put a Mobius Mini on there but I'm probably not going to do that and then at the front we've got the unbranded CCD camera there it has got a 2.1 mil lens on it and yeah I think this is actually going to be a better camera than was on the original B5 which I think is funny yeah so micro CCD should be a nice setup hopefully and yeah I did have to set up beta flight so I had to put all of my modes in it just had arming on the AUX3 and then nothing else I've added anti-gravity on permanently and air mode on permanently and switch dynamic filters on it had motor stop turned on which I think it's odd so I turned that off so that the motors are always spinning in acro mode it had the digital idle quite low at 4.5 just stock beta flight I've up that so that we don't get any flips of death or anything like that I've switched around the on-screen display because just everything was selected so like I say yeah you're gonna have to do a setup with this but yeah it seems quite nice and it is priced around about the same as this and the baby hook but potentially we'll have to see with these bigger propellers it might have more power and more power is more smiles isn't it so yeah I'm going to be using my Fat Shark Dominator HD3s and I'm going to be using a Bandicoot antenna not this one here because it's a linear antenna on here and a Omway Cloverleaf and then this is the Furious FPV True Diversity System and I'm going to be using the DVR to record that and I've set it up on my Tyrannus so I've got my arming on this two position switch and then I've just got angle and then acro and air mode air is permanently turned on I've missed out horizon and I've also got lost model alarm on for the beeper as well and I've also set the voltage warning lower because it was set to like 3.5 and I imagine with these smaller batteries you're going to get the alarm going off at the top of the throttle if you don't do that. So I'm going to be using the on-screen display to monitor the battery voltage to make sure it doesn't drop below 3.2 volts or thereabouts. And then we have got a XT30 connector which is really nice and should be standard. And like I say I'm going to be using this Ishin battery also bought some of these batteries as well but I don't like them they've got the two connectors on which I think is a little bit of a waste of weight and when I bought them the listing only had one connector so I'm not sure what that's about but there you go I might use those as a spare battery but probably this one as the main battery so just another couple of things to mention you're given a load of spare screws which is nice they are the recessed type as well which 
is nice I think and you're gonna have to screw in the propellers and one thing that I think is really nice about these silver motors is that it makes it really easy to match the holes up because like it's reflective so you can see when they line up with the screws and yet you're given a set of these screws I think I ended up having one spare at the end you're gonna need a 1.5 millimeter hex driver to get those screwed in so I've put my custom rate in there as well of 0.8 it had 0.7 in there which is the stock beta flight rate and I've changed the PIDs as well because it just has stock beta flight PIDs which I don't think are going to be very helpful for this model so with the battery that I'm going to be using it weighs 137 grams which is just 7 grams more than the GTR 90 with a 4S 450 milliamp battery so with the bigger props I think the numbers might be in its favor of course it's a bigger model you know so some people might not like that and might say well you know it's unfair to say that it's got more power because yeah it's a bigger model it's got bigger props and speaking of the props you can see there's actually quite a bit of room there. You could probably get away with 2.8 inch props on the back, but not on the front. Those ones are very close there. So, yeah, just another thing as well is that it's set up for D-Shot 600. So, if you really, really want to, you can do turtle mode, but... I advise against that because I've had a couple of copters have their ESCs burn when the motors have been running upside down so I don't think it's worth the risk that sort of thing only really worth the risk if you are racing in competition and really need a way to get out of it otherwise I would always recommend go and pick it up okay let's go for the line of sight with this guy starting off in angle mode and wow just a couple of clicks of throttle there to get it hovering I think this is gonna have a crazy amount of power so let's have a see <laughs> yes just as I suspected crazy power to wait I've gone with the lowest gains possible because with the stock PIDs I was just getting crazy oscillations and vibrations, which is just down to the tune, that's all. So yeah, really low gains with this one to get it flying to the point where I don't think it's doing any damage to the motors. Wow, this is zippy which is expected really for this prop size yeah I think this is going to be a good one you know it's getting blown away by the wind we've had some crazy weather here recently 22 mile per hour wind and I think it's gusting up to about 15 today oh yeah this is nice so the line of sight really is to just show the punch and it's got a great amount of punch To be quick on the eyes when you do that <laughs> seems to be behaving nicely not too noisy either with these bigger props but when you give it a blip of the throttle a little bit of a scream not sending all the dogs barking though so that's good <laughs> yeah pretty nice and something I like to do is just flick it back into angle mode to see if we've got any drift issues 
but nah. Absolutely rock solid. Line of sight test is passed. So just as I suspected, this is a fantastic model. I can't fault it whatsoever. And if you're thinking about either getting the GTR 90, the Baby Hawk R or this, I think my preference would be this. Now, I don't have the Baby Hawk R. I'm hoping to try it out at some point. But the GTR 90, yeah, it has got the Unify Pro and you can control the VTX from the on-screen display, but it's got a little bit of noise that filters through to it. And that seems to bother me quite a lot these days. Yeah, you could put a capacitor on it just like the Baby Hawk R has, but that would be having to modify it. Whereas this one, crystal clear video out of the box, and I would say more performance than the smaller models, which you could say is unfair to compare because it's a bigger prop, so it's going to have more power. But yeah, I was really impressed with it. It was really easy to tune. I only got a couple of flights in with it because of the weather and the light. But I'll overlay my PIDs here because I think if you flew it with these stock PIDs, you would get oscillations and probably your motors would get too hot because the stock beta flight PIDs have the D term really high and the gains are really low for this to get decent results. I think actually the D could be reduced even more but I was fairly happy with how it flew. So the camera is the PAL camera and I tend to find that with these micro swifts and the micro swift copies that you get a little patch in the bottom right hand corner but that is the same with the other micros that are out there. And yeah these props are just fantastic as well. Great performance out of those and yeah great range as well now the receiver does not have its RSSI enabled on the D8 receiver which is unusual because these little D8 receivers usually have RSSI enabled so you know you might want to get the plug and fly and put your own receiver on it if you want but this receiver is fine the flight time was just under four minutes I think it's just a couple of degrees above freezing here, so you probably get a better flight time in warmer weather, but I am absolutely satisfied with the flight time, and of course you could go up in battery size a little bit if you wanted to as well, but just look at that punch, absolutely loads, and very floaty, and loads of air time with it as well. So yeah, thoroughly recommend this one, which I'm pleased about because... It's been a lot of work getting copters flying lately, but this one, two hours, and I was all completely done. And that is the sign of a good copter when it doesn't take you all day to figure stuff out just to get a review out there. So this one was just literally plug it in, set it up, go flying, and perfect. So, yeah, I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one, and I suggest that you do, even if you have some of the 2-inch models. You know, it's it's really nicely priced, so, you know, it'd go well alongside the rest of your collection, I would say. It's definitely going to be one of the top ones in mine. So, yeah, I think... As the battery starts to deplete, I'm going to come in for a landing, and I'll thank you for watching. So, as always, please continue to subscribe. Cheers.